Some Connolly's next. Very well. You're welcome. Thank you, Chair, and thank you to the committee for uh, allowing for this possibility. I think it's really important. And I want to thank Dr. Peter Boylan and I want to thank Peter McGregor. You've come in here and you've done it in, in a very modest, moderate way to try and educate us and I appreciate that and I appreciate all your effort on the ground and I have to say at various stages of this I've despaired but that's for another day. So in my time here I'm just going to try and clarify. I have read all the documents with the help of my staff in my office. We've gone around in circles so I'm hoping I won't go around in circles and I just want to clarify a number of things. This is a leasehold. A lease there is no ownership here this does not belong to the state, this belongs to the landlord, notwithstanding that it's a 299 year lease, both the land and the hospital that's going to be built. There is a proprietary interest. I understand that, but we, do, we don't own it. And the mm -hmm. landlord at all times is, is, in, the, uh, is in the first yeah. schedule as uh, St. Vincent Healthcare. You know, I've, seen, I've seen it described as just a technical thing. Whether it's technical or not, I just want to put a few little things to bed here. The, the, it's a leasehold interest, so the HSC, the state, will neither own the site nor the hospital. They will not. Thank you. So then in relation to the use of the premises in terms of uh, things that have emerged, and I tried to listen as best I could to what happened yesterday and today, some of the premises will be used for private practice, but we don't know how many rooms are. That emerged, has it? That's correct, yes. That's we, correct. We, we, and we it, do, would you be aware, is that private practice for the consultants who have both a public and a private contract, mm -hmm. or is it open to uh, private medicine? Uh, I, I'd imagine, in, as in most hospitals, uh, it would be for consultants who have public uh, contracts and, and, uh, and, and the so right to private practice as well. Practice. Okay. Not outside private consultants. Yeah, okay, thank you. Yeah. And then in relation to the co-location, because everybody, and I must say I find it a source of frustration that we're continually given the background of the importance of the hospital. That goes without saying. I mean, we were forced to bring a, um, a motion before the Dáil to implement the National Maternity Strategy, which wasn't being implemented, further to a HICRA report that was absolutely condemnatory in as much as HICRA can condemn anything. So. I don't need any background information on how important this is. So let me just look. What has happened to this uh, co-location, which first came about as a result of an accountant's report back in 2008, government policy in 2013, and four ministers since? Is it still co-location, or am I exaggerating by saying it's no longer co-location, but the proposed new National Maternity Hospital is a wholly owned subsidiary of St. Vincent's Healthcare Group. That's correct. And the Vincent's um, documents, like their annual reports yeah. and so on, make continual reference to clinical and corporate integration. Okay. And... Yeah. yeah. So, uh, the, the, the clinically permissible and legally permissible has been teased out. So, I'm going to park that just for the moment, because I want to... Various things have been said, you know, about red herrings or that were being uh, misinformation. Now, I have tried desperately to get all of the information and make sense out of it. So I take issue with comments like that from various um, doctors, I might add, and various people. I think it's unacceptable. But let me just look at this. So the co-location is no longer co-location. The new National Maternity Hospital will be a wholly owned subsidiary of St. Vincent's Healthcare Group, which will be owned by St. Vincent's Holdings. That's correct. That's correct. So St. Vincent's Holding is a, new, is a new company to which the nuns give their share. And that's owned by three directors who are shareholders. That's right at the moment. Yes. Okay. And we know nothing about how or in what manner or what conditions were attached to the nuns divesting them, the religious sisters of charity, divesting their ownership of whatever they've given over. We know nothing about that, do we? We have seen no paperwork between uh, Ireland and the Vatican, apart from the letter of permission from, uh, from the Vatican. And that which was a condition? Yeah, uh, and it contains information in it which, which means that there is other documentation and other paperwork which we have not seen. Okay. So, at some stage, and you've mentioned this, the religious sisters of charity said they were given it as a gift. That's right. That gift didn't materialise. 
But what no. did materialise was a transfer that was confirmed just two or three weeks ago, where they have finally given over their share to the Vincent Holdings at the top of the pyramid. That's correct. And we have no idea uh, of the circumstances or the conditions or surrounding that gift, transfer or otherwise, have we? That's correct. Okay. They... So the St Vincent Holdings would have been enriched immeasurably by that transfer of land? Uh, I'm sure their balance sheet would increase hugely. Um, the, the conditions were um, they had to observe particular canon laws um, in, in the permission granted and we, we have had no um, knowledge of what those uh, you know what, what what the instructions were as to how they were to observe yeah. and there's no we have not had sight of a shareholder agreement which also might reveal some of the things but we really do need to see all the paperwork between Ireland and, and at the time thanks to yourself and to other people on the ground we got some insight into what canon law and which aspects had to be complied with to allow for the transfer of the nuns shareholding or the nuns uh, possession over to Vincent Holdings but we've no clarity on that that's correct. Okay. And there was a lot of misinformation about the whether or not they needed permission. They needed permission, but yeah. that was denied by so various you, parties. I, I think you've already said that's important to get that. It's absolutely critical because we don't know what the sisters asked for, the reasons pre presented. Uh, we haven't seen the documentation submitted uh, to the Vatican and we haven't seen uh, any instructions on how they're to obey the canon law. So when the government says to us, don't worry about that because we have Vincent Holdings now with a new constitution, we have St Vincent's Healthcare Group with a new constitution, and we have the National Maternity Hospital designated company with a constitution, that those three constitutions protect, protect, that the, uh, are those three constitutions set out, there's no worry about religious influence because we now have made our, the organisations into secular organisations. Well, we're being asked to believe that the Vatican have approved the transfer of the sisters' assets into a holding company in order to facilitate the building of a maternity hospital yes. in which procedures directly contradictory to church law, Catholic church law, okay. will take place. Okay. Uh, that's the problem. Now, so let's go to take a different route then in the few minutes. So the, Nash, the, the, the religious sisters of charity could have decided, I'm going to gift the site to the state. They said they would. That's, and that didn't happen? No. So we don't know why that didn't happen? They probably weren't let. Okay. <laughs> That's are... possible one interpretation. Yeah. Or they might have come to some arrangements with St Vincent's Holdings or St Vincent's Healthcare Group. We don't know. But we it would know. be vital to know that. Absolutely. Okay. And so they've given that over, and here we are now with a secular St. Vincent's healthcare group. Do you know at what point they became secular? Well, I'm not sure that they are secular because we haven't seen the correspondence between Ireland and the okay. Vatican. So when they assure us in documentation, we've all got documentation that they're now a secular. Well, I think one part of the documentation said they were evolving into a secular group. And lately we termed it is a secular group. You can't help us as to when it became a secular group. I'm not sure it has become a secular group, so I can't. Uh, and what would you need? To, what would you need to see to um, all of the paperwork between Ireland and the Vatican in relation to this? Okay, and then if we go back to um, Peter in relation to, I would be unhappy with a leasehold interest, notwithstanding that it's two ninety nine year lease. But what I want to look at here is: is that lease more beneficial to St Vincent's? Holdings and St Vincent's Healthcare Group than it is to the uh, state? Um, if the services are provided as are intended, yes. the, as I said, leaving aside the questions of, of, of money and, and value, which, are, which is not my focus, but rather the focus same, is on the provision same, of the services. Same, same, same. If, if the services are provided as intended, then it is a matter for the state to decide that this is of sufficient value that this is a good value lease. Oh, that's, that's, sorry, I called your name wrong. I beg your oh, pardon. That's okay. I beg your pardon. Just in, 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 what is the benefit to the St. Vincent's Healthcare Group uh, or, or St. Vincent's Holdings of having the whole lease sold? 
So to just address, yeah. the, I mean, the, 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 the network of agreements delivers benefits to each one of the parties. And, so, and the one reason I read for the Vincent's Health is that they want to provide an integrated care. Yes. And because of the interjoining. Could that have been done uh, by contract, by different, uh, different um, legal documents? The, whole, the full ownership given over to the state and then various legal documents to say, of course, we have interconnections. There is, a, it was in the lease, there is a set of terms in relation to shared areas. So those shared areas may be corridors or, or interchange in, 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 inter, inter piercings between the two sets of the, uh, the buildings. Now, those shared area agreements do not require a common ownership on both sides of the agreement. The same terms could be, could be reached between independent parties. The example would be given that there's no requirement for St. James's Hospital to own the new co-located National Children's Hospital in order for the co-location to function with, on, on that campus. I'm over time. I just, there was one last point for Dr. Boylan because you've mentioned it a good few times and it touched me in relation to the change in autonomy from the woman to the clinician if we go with clinically appropriate. And you might just conclude on that for me with the chairperson's permission. That, that, that change that we're taking it from the woman and we're putting it back totally into the hands of the clinician, whoever he or she may be. It's particularly back. relevant in, in light of the repeal of the Eighth Amendment and the 2018 oh, Act, uh, which allows for a woman to make a decision about her own health care, independent of any doctor's opinion. Uh, clinically appropriate puts the authority back onto the doctor and removes the autonomy from the woman. Thank you.